We have three more speakers. The next one is Ryan James Yalak from the National Gay Blood Drive. And again, I, I apologize if I did not pronounce your net last name properly. It's Ryan James Yasek, but you were close. <laughs> I, I, am, I am sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, good afternoon, committee members. Thank you for taking the time today to meet about this important issue and for allowing us to voice our experiences with it. It really means a lot to those of us directly affected by the FDA's ban against men who have sex with men, and most importantly, the recipients of donated blood. My name is Ryan James Yezik, and I am proud to be an MSM donor. It's always interesting to me when we're referred to as donors, uh, considering the amount of donating we actually do, which as you know is none, for those of us who are compliant. Growing up, giving blood never really crossed my mind all that often. The first and only time I donated blood was in high school. I remember being in a gymnasium surrounded by a group of my peers when I came across the MSM lifetime deferral question. I had just recently began exploring my sexuality privately and thought that if I answered yes, everyone would find out. And so for fear of being outed, I answered no and donated blood that day. I spent the next several weeks paranoid I would receive a call from the blood donation center informing me that they could tell from my blood I had had sexual contact with another man. Several years later, I was working for a television network when a tornado struck one of our offices in Tennessee. The company, the company put out an emergency call for blood donations and my boss asked me to go with her. As I gathered my things, memories filled my mind reading through the donor history questionnaire in high school and coming across that MSM lifetime deferral question. I suddenly got the feeling that I might not be allowed to donate now that I was living my life as an out and proud openly gay man. For the first time in my life, blood donation had hit close to home for me. I had found a reason to give blood, a way that I could help save lives, that is, until I found out I couldn't. Not because I wasn't feeling well or because of my travel history or because of a tattoo, but because I had had sexual contact with another male even once since 1977, because I am gay. That experience made me feel like a second class citizen, like something of another species. It felt alienating, wrong, and above all, unnecessary. I left my job and set out to make a documentary about the many ways you can still be legally discriminated against for being gay here in the US. You can be fired from work, denied a marriage license, bullied at school, kicked out of your home as a minor, and kicked out of private organizations like religious institutions and the Boy Scouts of America. However, none of these examples of discrimination come directly from our government like the MSM lifetime deferral does. And none of these examples perpetuate the stereotype that all gay and bisexual men have HIV and therefore must be blanket banned from doing something. I spent three and a half years trying to understand why this lifetime deferral was in place and trying to figure out what I could do to change it. While I concluded that the lifetime deferral should not be in place anymore, I found that there isn't very much that can be done to change it. My attempts, my many attempts to talk to the FDA and their, about their policy were all either denied or ignored. That is when I decided to organize the National Gay Blood Drive to bring attention to the ban and to help save lives. This past summer, 1,500 gay and bisexual men came out from around the country and showed their willingness to contribute to the nation's blood supply by bringing 15 eligible ally donors to donate in their place. A total of 3,000 individuals participated in the event, and together we helped save up to 4,500 4, lives. We would have doubled that amount if it weren't for the MSM lifetime deferral. And so, 40. 44,326 petition signatures were collected calling on the FDA to change the policy. We started off with a bang last year, tripled in size this year, and will continue to grow until discrimination based on sexual orientation is eliminated from the blood donation process. I learned so much about this issue from the people I got to know throughout my journey. I met the openly gay mayor of Campbell, Evan Lowe, who hosted a blood drive for a city, but couldn't donate blood himself. I met Rich Myers and his husband in Los Angeles, whose son couldn't go to Legoland when they weren't allowed to participate in the school's blood drive. I met Lynn Walton in San Jose, whose gay son can't take, who can't, whose gay son can't donate blood to his own brother who suffers from an autoimmune disease. I met Blake Lynch in Florida, a nursing student who can't donate blood for his friend Emmy, who suffers from sickle cell disease. Emmy helped me understand that when she, need, when she needs blood, she likes to know that it's there and that it doesn't matter if it's gay blood. What matters is that it's healthy blood. I met Congressman Mike Quigley, who along with 85 other members of Congress, has written to HHS multiple times over the past few years in an effort to change the policy. 
I met wonderful people from blood banks around the country and learned that most of them do not support the policy they are required to enforce. I met straight allies who had never donated blood before but decided to do so on behalf of the gay and bisexual men who couldn't. And finally, I met MSM donors who, despite being banned from donating, brought someone to help save lives by donating in their place. It's easy to put us in a box, label it MSM, toss it on a shelf, and let it sit for 30 years. But we are more than that. We are leaders, fathers, brothers, friends. We are human, just like you. It's our behavior that puts us at risk, not our orientation. Arthur Kaplan told CNN in 2012 that this very committee has had the evidence to recommend changing the policy since 1999 when he chaired it. This committee has had the evidence to cautiously make incremental changes to this policy, and yet it hasn't been touched in 30 years. And so I have a few questions for you. Are you aware of the negative stereotypes and stigma that this ban perpetuates and the consequences it has on gay, gay and bisexual men? If there are other communities that have increased, I'm sorry, increased risk for contracting HIV, why are we only banning this one? If the American Medical Association supports changing the policy, if the organizations who collect the blood, American Red Cross, America's Blood, and AABB, support changing the policy, if the American people increasingly support changing the policy, why don't you? If there are other countries who have changed their MSM policies without any increased risk, why are we incapable of doing the same? If we have the ability to be at the forefront of removing sexual orientation from the blood donation process altogether, then why are we so far behind? On behalf of the National Gay Blood Drive and eligible gay and bisexual male donors across the country, I ask that you vote to recommend a change to the FDA's MSM blood donor deferral policy and bring an end to this lifetime ban. Thank you. Thank you.